Hi. A couple of months ago, some colleagues and I sat down to talk about issues in the National Health Service. At the time, there was deaths happening in one hospital trust that was causing great concern. And this topic comes up time and time again. We weren't, and we were never will be, in full knowledge of all the facts that happens in these cases. But there is an ongoing concern and debate about how targets drives performance and what the impact is on tar of targets on the performance of the organisation and particularly on the outcomes of patients. And I think the debate which is coming now should be seen in that light. Hello, my name is Toby Thompson. I'm here today with Mike Bourne, Professor of Business Management here at Cranfield, Pietro Michelli, who's the lecturer in business performance, and Monica Franco, Senior Research Fellow in Business Performance. We're talking about target setting, performance, clearly. Gentlemen, ladies, performance, targets, what is the relationship? There's been an incident recently in North Staffordshire Hospital in the UK anyway, where targets seem to uh, end in the death of several patients in there. Is target setting going to be the death of performance to be provocative? Mike? No, I don't think it is. But I think you've got to be very careful about how you set targets and the context in which you do it because as you see from incidents like North Staffordshire Hospital and the Baby P case and things like that, you can have dire consequences from setting targets in the wrong way and managing them incorrectly. So is the expectation of the government that targets are simple and can be applied to those complex situations or is it down to the individuals in that context to say this is not appropriate for us in, in our context? Well I think the government tried to get a simpler message across and targets a very quick and simple way of doing it. The problem is that when you get down on the ground life is never ever that simple and therefore targets drag you off in different directions and can destroy what you're trying to do. So Pietro, targets seem to be very monolithic, very simple, very easy to pick up and handle. Yeah. Are they as simple as it sounds? No, and especially depending on which context you apply them. Uh, in, in certain contexts they can be appropriate almost in any case. Of course we will talk about how to design targets and how to use them. Uh, in certain cases, the particularly uh, complex ones, like the public sector, they can be a very kind of reductionist view. They can bring a reductionist view to what is a very Overly complex, simplistic then. Yes, yes. A very complex issue of delivering uh, healthcare, you know, or uh, social services, or any type of service that the public sector provides. But it seems in the, pri in the private sector, targets are indispensable. You have to have them. Well, I think, I mean, there is a lot of research done in the last 30 years that suggests that actually if you have targets that improves performance, so the public, I mean, sorry, the private sector has followed that advice of, yes, we, we use targets because that seems to improve performance. Uh, one problem is how you use them and, of course, how do you design them and in which context. So we're back to what my colleagues are So is it an ideology them. then which has moved over to the public sector, that it works in the private sector and therefore it will work in the public sector regardless of context? Mm -hmm. We use tar targets to stretch people's performance, and that's what we try and do. Mm. The problem is when you overstretch them, and even the, the, the research that's gone on over the last 30 years, we know that if you overstretch targets, people run around like headless chickens, uh, and that's an issue. So mm. explain a bit about the North Staffordshire case. The targets were set by the government, by the local PCT. Who, who set those? I mean, basically, there is a set of government guidelines for NHS hospitals around waiting times, uh, times that you can spend in A&E. And, and in particular in North Staffordshire, it was the A&E target that, that's been under pressure. Because if you measure that people go through A&E in four hours, uh, then there are various ways you can get them out of A&E. One is you can treat them, which is actually quite hard. The other way is you can just uh, throw them out of the hospital, uh, let them go. Uh, and if they're still ill, that, that can be a real issue. Or you can admit them to the hospital. But is it, is it the target or the slavish adherence to meeting the target? Doesn't it seem to be it's, the individual? It's sort of that. I mean, a target is a tool, is a name, okay? Like an indicator. It's something that indicates something about your performance. Now, it's how you use it that makes a difference. It's not a target per se that is wrong. A target is an object. It's something that you can develop with people and use. The misuse of those can create a lot of problems and uh, the delivery because that's what it is the delivery of public services cannot be driven solely by targets that's that's one of the key things that we found in our research so it seems to squash autonomy that you have no indiv individual opinion discretion as an individual manager um, and you just it, you just it have can to do. It depends on how the target has been set and how much say have you had in setting the target? But it seems like an absolute. It seems like something which is sacred and come down, handed down from somewhere. Isn't it a construct of some sort in that local context? In what sense? Isn't it something that's been set by something which can be deconstructed, which can be taken apart, and it's not something which is handed down which you then have to do something with? 
Well, that's the process of developing the targets. And, and that's why, for example, in, in smaller contexts of, say, small manufacturing firms, that can be easier. When you are dealing with uh, an organization that has got a million, 300,000 people, uh, it's very difficult that you can negotiate all targets, especially the national ones. But, you, I mean, the thing you've got to remember is targets are something that communicates to everybody what they're trying to achieve. So the 18-week uh, reduction, you know, waiting list time in the NHS was a great battle cry for the whole of the NHS. So there's a vision aspect around there's a, a vision target, aspect not it. just something yeah. that you will do. And, and so the government's latched onto that and told people in the NHS about it, and people in the mm -hmm. NHS have picked that up. But there's the other side of it. Uh, you know, what does it do in individual cases? And overall, we've seen this reduction and people have got within 18 weeks. Uh, and that's got to be a good thing because people are treated quicker, they're going to have better outcomes. So targets are communication yeah. tools, really. But it's Pure also, I mean, you're, uh, I think that the, the, exactly, a target is also an aspiration. And particularly when there is a political element, that's fundamental. And, and that is one of the things that makes the public sector more difficult. Because you're also communicating something that you aspire to. And that's not necessarily supported by data. That of your previous performance, for example, that you would do, say, in a manufacturing context or in a service private sector uh, company. So it's it's kind of differentiating between something that can be negotiated and is and is really based on data and capabilities, and something that instead is an aspiration of saying a hundred percent of our patients are going to be treated within eighteen weeks or within be seen within four hours and so, so that on. The negotiated aspect involves all stakeholders, all constituents around and who are affected by that target should be involved in setting that target. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's one of the key things that you have to bear in mind when you are setting a target. There are other things. I mean, you have to. Uh, people have to commit to the target, so that's one way of committing them, so having them participate. And there's another one, you have to have feedback on what you, how well you're doing against the target. You also have to have resources to be able to reach the target and knowledge about how to reach it. And I think in all those things have not been really taken into account when the government set all these um, target setting uh, approach. So in some places, people have the target, but they don't have the resources to reach it. They don't have maybe the knowledge to how to do it. So all those things then become more difficult to to um, to uh, address when then you're using targets so it's, it's just a so here we are in a business school we teach this you guys teach this you research it what is the what are the lessons that we can teach people around performance is it, is it a debate around the relevance of target setting is it a debate around how performance sits into the general yeah. neoliberal context that maybe we're not in anymore I mean, we teach them how to design measures and we teach them how to set targets because we believe it's a very good way of communicating to the organization what it's there to achieve. But we also teach people to go through a process of setting the targets, think about the stakeholders, communicate what's trying to be achieved, prioritise and in particular resource what you're trying to do, as well as building the system to deliver the target. And if you don't do that, you, you cause all sorts of problems because you set an aspiration that people can't achieve, and that's a real issue. You've got to have a system behind it that can be modified and developed to actually achieve the target, and that's what it's really all about. So the North mm -hmm. Staffordshire context, that situation, that terrible situation, wouldn't happen again, presumably? Um, the other thing that, uh, I mean, there is a lot of research about, uh, both from us and other people, of course, on target setting, and that says that setting a target that is challenging, that is specific, and all sorts of attributes that we've discussed so far, that can have a positive impact on performance, and that is proven in many contexts. Now, the big question is, in very complex issues like provision of healthcare, now, is the target approach the most appropriate one or not? That is an open question. And there is, we are doing research on this, but it's not an easy thing to find, if you like. So in, in certain contexts, it has been observed and proved, if you want, this mm -hmm. impact of targets on performance. But in, in a very complex situation, it might not be the case that uh, delivery of performance can be achieved through targets. So it's one of those things, it depends. It depends what you mean by target, it depends what you mean by content. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a target is just a management tool, that, but there are others. And, uh, and I, one thing that I'm picking on what my colleague was saying, um, targets are very costly to manage. So another thing probably for the public sector to analyze is how much mm -hmm. is it costing them to, to use these targets and look at the benefits. Is it really delivering the benefits? Because like I said, it's just a management tool. Maybe there is others like investing on leadership. So common it. sense, as, a, as an independent observer here, does common sense have any part to play in, in this target setting thing? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when, when people lose it. Uh, because in, in the case of, of these instances, whether it's the North Staffordshire NHS Trust or a BBP or MRSA, all these things, people have got fixated on the process and the target rather than the objective, first of all, but also what they're there to do. 
uh, they kind of lost the plot sometimes. And, and that is because a system that is so much enforced and so much driven by targets and measurement can create that. And that's the cultural issue. So the target takes a life on of itself, of its own. It becomes a thing in itself Absolutely. as opposed to a means to an end. It will. But you've got to remember, we, we, we employ managers to manage. And that's what it's all about. And so they've got to take the target and then they've got to manage their way towards that target. You've got to also understand that it, it, you can't achieve all targets in all situations. We've got a global recession going on now. People are not sticking to the targets they had 12 months ago. And you've got to adjust for that. If you don't adjust for that, you, you get this really uh, weird and, and dysfunctional behaviour uh, because you can't deliver targets all the time. Uh, and managers have got to realise that. They've got to know when they're doing their best. It's an aspiration. Uh, and they've got to work towards it. For example, um, just, um, in complex situations like what we we're talking about, like a public sector, research suggests that actually you have to have a culture that um, um, is able to to deal with failure. And actually, um, yeah. instead of setting outcome targets like the ones that they have, they set learning targets because it, it's seen as a more effective way of, of, um, of driving performance. So for example, that's something that is not happening. I mean, all the targets tend to be outcome targets in a context that is very complex, which then researchers are saying that that will not work. Mm. Well, I would actually disagree with it because I think that uh, some of the NHS test targets are not outcome targets. They're actually process targets. They're talking about 18 weeks. They're talking about four hours. Yeah, but the 18 becomes then a number. Oh, it does become a number, absolutely. It's but not it's not about the level of healthcare in the UK. It's not true. about uh, out patient outcomes. It's not about patient... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but because that is also something that is very much more difficult to measure, and that's why. But uh, there is something that we are working on, which is the, the cultural aspect of all this. Yeah. Mm. And that is both how the existing culture affects the way in which you uh, work on measurement and target setting and so on, and how these then shape or impact the culture of the organization. So that is a key issue because what has happened in the more dramatic cases of this kind in which people have been killed in inverted commas by targets has been a, completely, a complete loss of that common sense that we need and the fact that managers need to have that common sense and the people working with them. And, and the fact of getting fixated on the targets has kind of taken that away. And basically you're just delivering against that target. The rest doesn't count anymore because it's not measured, it's not subject to a target. It seems an interesting issue of causality. Uh, we have to leave it there. We can talk about this a lot longer. Mike Bourne, Pietro Michelli, uh, Monica Franco, thank you very much thank indeed. You. If you have any comments regarding this debate, do please leave them in the box below this window. Thank you very much.